That thing had nine lives. She just spent them all. <laughs> Woo! Working today on replacing the master inverter compressor on a Daikin heat recovery unit. It happens to be this bad boy right here. What happened is the indoor EEVs start sticking open and they start washing refrigerant back. You get liquid coming back and it washes out the top bearing and causes it to fail. Uh, check the compressor for um, mag ohms, everything is good. Check the inverter board, everything is good. We've been losing them for the bearing. So now when I start losing compressors, I put the service checker on the unit on the iTouch downstairs and I run it for 24 hours and I watch all the indoor units and I notice what happens is you get cold, uh, cold gas and liquid pipe temperatures and then plus your return air temperature that's in the unit will actually start dropping after it's in an off cycle at zero pulses. So now I'm trying to do preemptive strikes and I'm putting the service checker on all my other schools and looking for that data and then changing the EEVs before it becomes an issue so I don't have to do this. So normally what I do on changing these out is put them in recovery mode. I will leave this one open. I will close these three. Then on the other unit over here, I will close this one, the equalizing line. Then I'll put the Appian core removal tool there, there, and then down here on the charging port. Take the cores out of these two, pull the refrigerant out from here and here, and then after, and dump it into the suction line, and it'll dump all the refrigerant over into this condenser over here. Once I get it all done, I then uh, go ahead and usually I will cut this out right here, cut it out down here, pull the compressor out, debraze this one, debraze that, pull it down, get the new compressor in. I will put a 3 16 access fitting in here. I'll drill a hole and braze it up. It's a good bleeder for when you're putting everything back in. You're uh, trying to braze everything back in. That little regulator back there, way back there, he likes to bleed off refrigerant. You don't ever get it all out when you put, go into recovery mode. It, it holds a lot. It holds a little bit of liquid in there and it'll bleed off ever so much. So you gotta have a bleeder in there, or you're gonna constantly have a pinhole leak. So it's kinda helpful to have the gas in there in the aspect it keeps the lines purged. So while you're brazing, the nitrogen purge isn't really necessary because it's constantly feeding off a little bit of liquid, bleeding off that liquid refrigerant. You got a little bit of low pressure gas coming through and keeping the lines free of oxygen. Uh, got to get this guy out and I got to take and I unplug him from the board normally he is the gray one find it right there there you got a gray plug and a yellow plug and it's the gray one normally what I do is I check the amp draw and if you look at the other one start rising it's got low amps normally what I do here is I'll go ahead and recover the the refrigerant once I recover the refrigerant into the condenser I'll go ahead and remove this take off the take the cap off take the terminals off tape them up put them to the side then I turn the power back on and put it in recovery mode again because once you kill the power it's going to go out of recovery mode and if you don't put it in recovery mode all the valves will close and when you go to vacuum you're going to have spots that aren't going to get vacuumed because they're they're closed on you so it opens all the valves up in the unit the reversing valves and everything and uh, all the solenoids what have you and it'll allow it for a, for a vacuum so let me get to working on this, get this removed, and get everything in recovery. Get it all recovered over to here. I'm going to go ahead and run these in. I got this set up on 14. To 
This should give me enough juice to run them in. I broke them loose with a with a wrench already. So it'll ratchet for me. Then I'll have to go in and hit them with the 5 16 hex wrench in order to uh, make sure they're closed off good. Get that one. Now the equalizing line on these are really fun because they're at an angle. That's the only one on the unit that's not being worked on has to be closed as equalizing line. The rest of the refrigerant is going to be coming back through here into the system, downstairs, into all the heads, through the suction line on that unit. You just got to make sure you separate this one from over there. Snug them down. Don't kill them, just snug them down so the refrigerant leaks back. And I'll go ahead and shut this one here, and then I'll put my core removal tools on. And I got the core removal tools in. One right there gave me fits. The, the doggone thing wouldn't come out, so I had to put a rag over it and open the valve up real quick and blow it out of there. Uh, I'm going to replace them anyway. I mean, I've got these two came out. The other one didn't, but I'm going to replace all three of them with new cores since I'm in here working on it anyway. Might as well give it some fresh cores. Now what I'll do is I'll set up my gauges and my recovery and I will pump from there and there and dump it into the line set which is going to go down into the system. Alright, I got the everything set up. Bled the, bled the refrigerant through the G5 twin through the manifold, both low and high side. Going to the suction, the suction line on the condenser, and I also let this I let this bleed off while I was connecting the hoses. I don't like any uh, any chance of uh, moisture or atmosphere getting in there, so I do that. So now let me uh, fire it up. Get it all recovered. I usually let it go down about zero, maybe negative one. Then I'll close this down and I'll purge it for 30 seconds and then shut everything off. And I usually push it out the refrigerant out of my line. Now, one thing I do try to do when I'm uh, putting it on down. Try to get all your wiring away from where you're going to be brazing as best you can. Get it off the lines that are going to get hot, like this one here is going to get hot. So I move these up here. I move my fan wiring, which is usually down here in the way, over through here. I unhooked it. I got it hanging up over here. So, just some things to do while you're waiting for it to pop down. Now that I got it all recovered, I'm going to go ahead and put the core back into the suction line because it won't be used anymore so there's no sense in waiting till the end. So we're going to go ahead and get this guy put back in and get the core removal tool out of the way. And then it'll be time to 
cut the lines and get the compressor out. Now what I normally do is I take my M cutter and I'll cut the discharge line and then once I get it I can move it out of the way and as luck would have it on this one there's not enough braze down on here to where I can't use this to cut it. Normally if it's been replaced before there's a little bit of braze, a little slag down here that gets in your way and you can't turn this. So in that case I just take a sawzall and cut it off. Once I cut that off, I go ahead and drill a hole for my access tube to bleed it off while I'm brazing. I'll get that brazed in. I'll debraze this and then I'll braze that in. And then get all this put back together on the new compressor after I get all this stuff removed. So let me get these cut out. I got to bleed off the pressure even though like I said I've got I recovered it down to zero if you look back there there's some frost on that guy see all that frost that white he's still got residual refrigerant and he's got re residual refrigerant in it so it'll bleed off and it'll quit gassing off but then if I shut it again it'll bleed off more so it kind of feeds feeds the lines while you're brazing you just got to have a way to make sure it's bleeding off just open these up and then that's what this port is for because that last braze will always get you it'll always pinhole on you around here if you don't have some way to bleed it off all right got everything evacuated uh, I had 29.9 on the vacuum I had 575 microns stabilized once I shut everything off and sometimes on these it's a little hard to get a good micron reading especially if that little regulator back there has had it's got like trapped refrigerant but this it it apparently got everything out had a good vacuum on it so I got all the valves back out I got the, the equalizing line on that one open I got to put the caps back on and uh, the cores back in here. As I get that done, I'll hook up my compressor. I will go downstairs and on the eye touch, I will turn the unit back on after I take this out of emergency mode. And it should hum like a top. So I got the this thing, I got this, the 3 16 access fitting that's my bleeder always add these in when I change a compressor out it's imperative that you get those in there or you're going to be fighting the, the pressure coming off of that regulator get this one in got the thermistor back on I always take them off too before you heat up the line got to put a zip tie on that get my fans hooked back up It'll be good to go.